Kathy, our good friend at ACU of Texas here in the studio. I'm going to kick this on the FM. Here we go. Good morning. It's KHEA Radio, 99.5 FM. It's a couple minutes till 10 o'clock on a Monday morning. It's very cold outside, but we have some good news and some uh, good... A brand new book that just came out, and I'm going to uh, let my, my new friend introduce himself and then share what the name of the book is. Great. Hey, everybody. How's it going today? Uh, my name is Wayne Kerr, and uh, the name of the book is called Braving, the Art of Pursuing What Makes You Come Alive. Yeah. Two years in the making to pull this thing off. But two years. Yeah. Two years in the making. <laughs> so, you know, last year was a crazy year. Did it give you some extra time to finish the book up? Uh in fact, yes. That's so funny. It's like, I think I had no concept. My background is in music, and uh, my friend Kathy, we've known each other from my days of touring doing music, and when you do an album, you know, you have a certain time frame, and, and it's like you're on the clock. Things cost so much, and so you're like, we're doing this. We have one month in the studio, or you might have a couple months after that, but with a book, it's kind of intimidating. He's like, there's that blank screen, and like, what am I going to do right now? And I have to go outside and cut the grass. You know, you have a life that's going on. Um, but it was well into the works. Uh, a lot of it is based on interviews I did with different people. Um, and so, I mean, yeah, we can unpack that a little bit. But it did de- it give me some time to uh, to try and finish it up. Yeah, so you, you have daughters. That's right. Yes, I have two little girls, and they, they have the key to my heart. That's what I tell them, like, all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm all in and the dad thing, man. I'm all yeah. In. Yeah. And then uh, before we went on air, Kathy, you have daughters too. I do. And they actually, um, I have read them some of the book, and that was One of the things that I thought was really cool cool. was how they, like their perception and the things that they picked up um, when I was reading it to them. That's crazy. Yeah. And they're they're pretty young. I guess your daughters are the same age. Same age. Six and eight. Yeah. Yeah. Six and eight. Cool. All right. So, so Wayne, can you kind of let me know, um, we already talked about the title a little bit, but Braving the Art of Pursuing What Makes You Come Alive. Where does that come from? What does that mean? Yeah, so basically, so about two years ago, um, so a couple things were happening in my life that were all coming together at the same time. One, um, I was uh, having a sabbatical from my church position. So I've been leading worship at my amazing church in Katy, um, and it was at the seven-year point. They're very gracious to allow you to have a two-month pause button to just refresh your heart and soul. And so part of the thing was, man, I want to reach out to some different people and uh, maybe say, can I take you to lunch? People that have inspired me over the years and say, can I pick your brain or whatever? And at the same time, I was also turning 50. And so at that point, I was like, wait, what just happened? I thought I turned 40 <laughs> a second ago. And yeah. that's and when you have kids, as any of you parents know, it's all exponential. You're like, years are just flying by or whatever. So, uh, you know, when you have these moments where you're like, let me pause and look at where I've been and what am I doing and what's important and stuff. So uh, at the sabbatical, for me, it was a total God thing to come at that moment. And uh, so I started shooting notes out to people. I, all the years of doing music and traveling, I'm kind of like one person away from a lot of people. And so I would just shoot notes out and say, hey, you don't know me, but can I take you to coffee? And uh, then some responses were yes and some were no. And um, as I started having those conversations, what really started for uh, the purpose of just for me to like have a journal mm-hmm. to say, hey, this is my 50th year. What is God saying to me? Boy, I, every time a meeting would end, I would either get back in my truck or I would get off a Zoom conference and I'd be like, wow, that was inspiring. Like finally I was like, this I'm gonna this needs to be a book for people to check out. And then it kind of morphed and turned into this. So cool. Yeah. So it all started with the journal. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So do you still do you still journal now that the book's done? <laughs> <laughs> right now, no. I I'll take a sabbatical from that, journaling. It's like this right. is a lot of journaling. That's right. No, no. I mean, I think what I've I'm learning is like, hey, I, I want to keep being a lifelong learner. Like I don't wanna that's one of the chapters. And it's like I don't want to quit having conversations with other people. Cause like stories, that's what make us who we are. You know, and we I think we're right now, especially now more than ever, we're quick to categorize people and stuff. Mm-hmm. But once you hear their story, all of a sudden they're like a person and you're like, Whoa, I never had thought of that perspective or I never seen things through their lens. And so I want to keep, you know, learning from other people. That's for sure. Okay, cool. So so how, how is it broke up? Obviously it's in chapters, but you said a lot of it's with journaling. So is it uh, talk like conversations with the different people and just kind of going over it? Yeah. So the initial title was going to be Epic 50. And so my first thought was, because I talked to about 50 people and Mm -hmm. the first thought was I'm going to have 50 epic conversations with 50 epic people in my 50th year. But as that started going along, and, and I was consulting with some publishing folks, and they were saying, you know, it really sounds like some of these um, themes are the same, 
and it sounds like really like these big topics keep coming up. Like one whole chapter is being present and being thankful, right? And so um, several people were saying to be thankful. So it ended up being like really nine chapters of of the big nuggets that I got from these folks, along with a lot of stories of my own and stuff. So Okay. Yeah. So right now, if somebody wants to pick up a copy, what's the best way for them to do that? Call Kathy. Um, <laughs> I have bought five copies so far. You're so, amazing. Um, I, I've funny. given them to other people. That's it's right. So it's really easy to be able to gift this book as well because you can do it on Amazon and you just ship it right to them. So. Yeah, yeah. It's on um, Amazon it's, basically it's is the main book. thing. Um, I'm texting nice. Kathy. I'm texting Kathy and I'm getting books for everybody. It's like Oprah. She's my dis- <laughs> she's my Texas distributor. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, awesome. So, um whenever it comes to like actually getting a physical copy of a book made, uh is it pretty similar to an album? Is it a totally different oh, uh, game? Man, this was a total like funny learning curve because like in some ways it's the same in that as say when you're recording, you know, you you go through these phases where you um you have the song and the song is like this little child that you're like, I want to share it with the world, but I'm nervous. And you, you play the song, you know, and you get feedback, you know. Uh, but then you go to a mixing engineer and they say, we need to tweak this or let's change this a little. And it goes to mastering. It goes through some steps. I think it's similar in this. And th- there's some pretty, pretty funny stories. The first uh, person that when I was getting it completed, it went to an amazing uh, lady who was really helping edit everything. Right. My first time to really go down the road of having something edited. And so she sends back this document where you have to click these accept or deny Mm -hmm. the edits, right? And I was like, there are 3,800 edits, right? (laughs) So I'm clicking. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And it's some of it was like mindless. It was like, you know, I had too many spaces or a capital, you know, like just editing. But then some of it was, hey, you you already kind of said this earlier. Like maybe let's tweak this section. And so – so after it went through that round, it came back second round. There were 9,000 edits. And I was like, we are going the wrong way <laughs> in terms of, I was like, this is bad. So then, but she was very supportive. And she said, I'm giving this the full, the full-blown high-end publisher treatment because this is an amazing idea. So lastly, it went to a proofreader lady, but she was kind of harsh. And so she sent me a note and it said, she said, my opening comment is, um, I feel like you're a really likable guy, but I think we need to dial back the happy a little bit. <laughs> And I said, no one tells Jimmy Fallon to tell back the happy. Yeah. Come on. yeah. So, oh my gosh. So I'm, and, and then like a couple pages into it, she said, you use the word awesome 89 times. She said, uh, let's, we'll let you use it 10 times and let's find 79 other words for awesome. And I'm screaming at my wife. I'm like, if it's awesome, it's awesome. Yeah. And she's like, listen to her. She's a professional. Yeah. Anyway, so, I'd be like, well, how many words are in the book in total? And then take it, you know. Yeah, that's right. There's so 10,000 anyway. words and only 90 are on. Yeah, that's right. It's a good so, ratio. It was a funny process, but so surreal. Like it, when it got to the end of the process, when it went through typesetting and then setting for ebook and all that, finally through Amazon, you come to this point where you click this button to upload into Amazon. And I just, my, I just felt the weight of that. And I called my little girls in, actually, they were home with me. And I said, girls, let's pray right now because this is big. Anytime, I just want you to know that when you put your work into something, Bring God into it. And I said, let's pray before we click this button. Because maybe only two people will read it. Maybe Kathy will be the only one that reads it. Kathy and my mom. <laughs> you know, and that would be all. But I said, you know, God, I we give this to you. And, man, I was had tears in my eyes. And we just uploaded it, you know. And yeah. there it is. So who would you say is, who is the book for? You know, Kathy and your mom, of course. But, like, who is Everything the Everything I- is for me. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. Who's well. the ideal person, you know, that, um, mm. you know, young people? Is it for everybody? Man, you know what's weird is it is for the, it is, I just feel like it's for the human heart, man, right? And so I've gotten one email from, um, I got a note from some amazing kids that made a little video for me, right? Yeah. Kathy's kiddos. And they were just touched by one of the stories in there. And I got an email from a sweet lady at my church who's 80, and she said, you know what? Um, I had to force myself to go to sleep at midnight last night because I was just engrossed in, in the book. And she said, and I'm kind of in the winter of my life and I've um I, I've put down for a while what makes my heart come alive and I want to revisit that and that was just worth it for me right there I was yeah. like you know what so yeah it's not targeted to like I mean it's probably more youthy the way it's kind of written or whatever but it's just for people whoever you know whoever is feeling like man if they're picking this up or they're looking at it saying man um what does make my heart come alive, right? Because a lot of times I think our heart's taking a pounding, mm-hmm. especially during this year and in, in this generation. It's like it's way on the back burner. And, but, Need it. But God is like, yeah, you know what? Out of 
your heart is the wellspring of life. Well, Kef- I know for me, like, um, I did the kickstart whenever he was talking about mm. it. And obviously, I'm a huge Wayne fan. And because he's inspired me so much over the years, as well as just like, you know, through his music, I listen to it when I feel like I'm in a point where I really need to be guided and, you know, really just need to think about where I'm at. I feel like he's had a song for every situation. So I was confident that this is going to be an amazing book. But um, I bu- I did the kickstart and it came with two books. And so I had already said I'd bookmarked one for um, our training person. One, I'd been in the car and she listened to Christian music. So I felt comfortable. I knew that there'd probably be some stuff about God in it and felt like it was a, a good piece for her. And then Once I got it, I was like, you know, I'm probably going to buy another copy just to because I was in a leadership group. And I was like, I think that we're all we were always tossing around book titles. So I was like, I'll probably buy another copy and just do that. And Mm -hmm. then I'll just let them like circulate it. Like and I ended up saying, like, whoever wants a good book, just buy this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to buy it for you. Mm -hmm. And that's how I gave away several of the copies. Because after, like, the first, like, three chapters, like, he has places to put notes. And it asks, like, I told everybody, I was like, but just be prepared because it asks, like, the hard questions. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what do you think <laughs> about yourself? And what do others think about you mm. if you were really truthful? Like, it, it's really a good reflection book. But I agree. Mm. It's for everyone. Thanks. You know, hearing feedback, is it similar to getting feedback on a song or an album? Or is it a totally different feel? It's it's so different in some ways because um, so I'm I'm a lot in the arts as well right now so I do a lot of art and painting stuff and so it's different because when you're when you're doing music you know you have this idea and then you can go out a lot like generally you can go live and play it in front of people and you kind of get a feedback mechanism of like no one was listening and they they <laughs> walked they walked out like that was great yeah. or if it's a heartfelt song and then people are like hey what was the name of that or whatever, you start to tell yeah. this is on the right track or it's not. Again, with this book, they, I mean, I load, I uploaded it, and I'm like, well, the Kickstarter people, I'm going to mail it to them, but then I don't have any clue. It's completely out of my hands. Like, it's so, it's very surreal because, you know, in the music, you know, when I would do, um, when I was full time with music, I would have an album come out, and, and I could look at my calendar and say, I have 42 concerts, I have nine camps, four conferences, and I'll be able to see how it goes, but also see how it's selling. It might not sell, whatever, or you get their feedback good or bad but this is pretty surreal because it's like well now it's done and uh <laughs> you know and now yeah. you then and being able to share about it like this this is huge because like the times to do some interviews now because it's like it's continuing on and and to be able to kind of hopefully it's starting to maybe a podcast to be able to say i want to keep having these conversations with people and and share them and let the conversation keep going yeah so yeah would Thanks. you with with last year i think you touched on this a little bit but um it, it was like the perfect time for the book to release. You think that it was for like a time like this? Man, I do. I mean, I feel like honestly, at the end of the day, you know, like here's what's interesting. So I'm uh, one of my, I'm, re- I'm a real big fan of John Eldridge and his ministry. Um, and, um, you know, one of the things that they've uh, that they're really big on is asking God, what is your word for this year for me? So like at my different birthdays or whatever, I would say, you know, I, and, and this is just in the last couple of years where I would say, God, is there anything you're kind of saying over this year? And so when I turned 50, definitely the word was epic mm-hmm. in my heart. Now, and I was like, OK, I'm going to live my 50th year. And our girls, we traveled. We got to go to Yosemite. I've never been there in my life. And it was an epic year. So when this year had come around my, at my last birthday, I was praying about it. And I said, well, you know, God, you know, is there any little word, you know, that you have? And then it was funny. I wasn't hearing anything. And I said, well, if you don't have a word, uh, braving would be a good uh, word. You know, God, that yeah. you could use. And nothing, and like almost clear as a bell, God was like, no, that's not the word. Uh, the word is abide, abide in me, right? And that's like how the, the end of the book where I was just finishing typing things up and I shared that. I said, you know what? If I truly abide, I don't have to like be brave, right? I'm abiding in the vine of the creator of the universe. Then me being brave about some little decisions kind of goes out the window. So yeah, so I feel like I pray it's the right time um, for this, for whoever, really for whoever is reading it, it's not, the things that are out of my control. Yeah. Know? So that's true. That's true. This is KHEA Radio, 99.5 FM right now. It is 10 12. We're talking with author and musician Wayne Kerr, his brand new book, Braving the Art of Pursuing What Makes You Come Alive. And I also have Kathy, the ACU of Texas, here in studio hanging out. And uh, 
talking about the brand new book. We're going to take a quick break on the FM. We're going to keep it going on social media on KTA Radio. Real Radio. All right. So, yeah, we're still live on uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and awesome. uh, get the behind the scenes stuff going on. Yeah. So how was that? Uh, so you live in Katy. You drop your, your girls off at school? Yes. Are they transitioning <laughs> good, I guess, from that Christmas break? Um, well, today was day one, so the oh. transition wasn't oh. wasn't great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I was like, it's 545, let's go. I'm playing music. Yeah. It's dark and 39 degrees. You know, it's like, oh, we got to do this. Let's wake up. Yeah, so our girls are at uh, Katy Classical Academy, and okay. it's uh, two days a week. They're at this school. And so they kind of go up by uh, Katie ISD's schedule. Uh, so the other two days a week, we homeschool. Up other couple days a week, we homeschool. And uh, so it's pretty fun. So I'm Tuesday. So I, I Tuesday at homeschool. And uh, it's it's a mad scene, man. Um, but so far, we're, we're loving it. Yeah. So, yeah. That's so do you cool. guys, do you and Kelly take turns on homeschool Yeah, day? that's right. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, but I'm Tuesdays. And I have a fake, I have a t- fake teacher name. My, my name is, I said, you can't call me daddy. You can't call me Wayne. You can't say Papa, whatever. I said, I'm Dr. Hoff and far, far, far. Okay. So for this. <laughs> do they do it? Yeah. No. <laughs> they're, they're like, daddy, don't do that thing again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's funny. That's cool. That's cool. That's uh, you know, Katie's like a really, I like Katie. Yeah. It's really nice, and their football team, like the the high school, they're about to. I think, I guess, end the state now. Yeah, I mean, the state title game again. Yeah. <laughs> Continually, they're like a powerhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They um, beat uh, Clear Falls. Well, before that, they beat Shadow Creek, which was the champions last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Alvin ISD. I think they play. I was actually reading something about it this morning, like Cedar, somebody for the state championship, but. Okay. We're going to root for Katie, of course, because they, they're they representing for all of us. Yes. We just kind of ride the coattails. Right, yeah. Every year. <laughs> Seems like it. Yeah. Cool. So you you mentioned when you were doing music full-time. Yep. What what do you do music-wise now? So I'm on staff with Grace Fellowship that's in Katie, Church mm-hmm. in Katie. Um, so, and that's been about eight years. So I was uh, 16 years full-time, which is crazy, uh, traveling uh, and Different band guys, Matt Kidd, Frodo, we love you. Frodo, you're listening, uh, you know, just amazing. Like that's a whole thing in it itself, where God just brought different guys into my life who were just amazing and and just wanted to do it for the right reasons. They weren't like, hey, I want to like be seen. They were just like, hey, I have this gift, and we see God's doing something. So we were on this ride together. So um, nine albums uh, later, uh, and then uh, I guess it was around 2012. Um, uh, our church uh, approached me about me coming on to to kind of help lead worship, but I was still traveling some, but not as much. But the events I was doing were were kind of larger, so I was I wasn't doing 180 things a year, but I was doing like 50 things a year. But they were larger size mm-hmm. things, and and at that time my dad was battling cancer, and um, you know my wife and I were talking about having little ones. So again, it was a definite time where it seemed right, and. So yeah, so I'm uh, now eight years, almost nine years into being at the church. Um, but um, yeah, so as of about a year, a year and a half ago, I kind of took a slight change of position there, where I'm I'm the worship leader still, um, but not as many hours there. And they they're being very gracious to free me up to keep being creative. And okay, so I'm trying to give my best <laughs> to them, um, and I'm very thankful. It's like man, about a hundred and something volunteers in the worship ministry. So musicians, camera people, media. How many? A hundred, hundred and ten. That's a lot. Yeah, it's amazing. And so, and people they just are saying, "Hey, I, I want to serve in this way." And so I'm helping just steer that ship. And especially during like during COVID, I mean, we had 20 weeks in a row where um, we weren't having service. Mm-hmm. And uh, like everyone else, but we would come on Wednesday night and record our worship in a, in a room with 1500 empty seats, you know, and how strange that was. But to be reminded of, you know what, uh, we wish people were here, but it's really not for people. This is to God, you know, yeah. so we're doing this unto the Lord. And so, boy, it's, it's, I'm proud of, proud of that group and proud of that team. So that's what I'm doing musically. I still travel a little bit, um, and do things with my band guys, but it's not as much as it was before. And now kind of more art related and yeah yeah are you able to still uh get a chance to go in the studio and record some stuff um right now i haven't in a bit um it's been i think like you know as a creative person um you know it's almost like i view it like whenever i would start an album it was like a big safe entrance that had like 19 combinations you know what i mean and it was like 
okay, I'm about to open this part of my heart and I'm going to be authentic here. And, you know, I'm going to do this album and you open this big safe and you go in. Right. And so now it's kind of been like, I've been doing that with my art and painting and, um, and then now with this. And so, you know, who knows what God has in store. I hope that my songwriting is not done, but I feel like right now it's just kind of, uh, things are shifting a little. I mean, yeah. you have one, at least one song to write, though. I've got to write one more. Amory, <laughs> Amory <laughs> and the daughter. Amory. That's right. right. Yeah. So for for braving, um, I I searched for it and I and I saw it where you could buy it and everything. It was super super easy to find. Yeah, yeah. The only thing that I didn't notice was an audio version, unless I'm mistaken. Was yes. there one? It's happening now. Okay. Not right now, but <laughs> start reading. We'll only record. We can Chapter do this. Chapter one. Upload. Yeah. Well, uh, it's happening right now, and it's very strange because. Uh, and one thing that I think you'll be excited about, Kathy. Okay, so there's one. There's an allegory in there called the Tale of Two Mustangs, and it's um, it's a story that I just kind of saw in my mind, almost like a movie, and. The first half of the story happens at about in the middle of the book, and then it pauses and it kind of leaves you waiting. Later, you find out the rest. So I'm doing the audio book, and I'm about a fourth of the way through. But we're hiring this voiceover guy to do that part, and he's ah. like he's like a Sam Elliott guy. He's like the the Mustangs rode <laughs> westward, and I'm like this guy's amazing. Yeah. Um, awesome. So that's happening, and then I've got some audio snippets of some of the people from Zoom or cool. in person on like with Johnny Caraba. I was at his place, and we we're just on my phone. So the audios. Kind of not great, but you hear their voices coming and going in the book. So hopefully it'll be of interest. But for the most part, like your words, you're you're reading it. Yeah, that's right. I love it. Yeah, that's my well. favorite because you can tell what the what the author meant, and then also if you're yeah. if you're having these guys that you interviewed and a little bit of their voice, it just changes the game. It keeps you in, it, you know, yeah. pulled in. Yeah, because I'm I kind of I'm like you know I have some ADD like a lot of people. You know, like <laughs> if I, it's hard to just kind of listen to. Or read something unless it's pretty engaging, you know. And uh, yeah, so it's funny because I have a, little ho- have a little home studio. And once I first got up and running, I was like, I'm going through chapter two. And I'm like, this is really working. And there's my voice. But now I'm chapter four. I'm like, I'm sick of my voice. <laughs> like, I don't want to. Yeah. Do people want to hear my voice this long? Yeah. yeah. So we'll see. But I'm thankful to get it done, hopefully so. Very cool, man. Yeah, that's that's the best way I find in the car. Can can listen, yeah. kind of get get some time, and then get a break. Get what you're doing, yeah. go back in and, and plug back yeah, in. Yeah. I love it, totally, totally. I love it. So yeah, Amazon is is cool, and then even uh, on iTunes, how you can buy some books now. Yeah, as yeah. well. Kathy, yeah. do you do audiobooks? Do you do both? I do both. Yeah. Um. Actually, I do have ADHD, and it's really really real stuff. Um, mm-hmm. for me. And so usually, what I do is I listen to the book that I'm reading. So I will be reading it at the same time that I'm listening to that it. That works? Oh, yeah. It's it's a game changer. That's cool. Now, when you do that with mine, don't be like, hey, Wayne, you skipped something when you were doing the audio book. <laughs> you skipped a line. You should have had Kathy <laughs> pr- uh, pr- proofread the audio or like, proof of listen. Um, I was, I'll I was send paraphrasing. you my edits. <laughs> okay, seriously. <laughs> cool. Okay, so we got about a, a minute and a half, and then we can go back on, on the FM keep talking about about everything. If you're right. watching uh, on social media, feel free to let us know, I guess, where you're watching from and what you got going on today, how you're staying warm. It's way too cold outside for for me. Way it's too cold. cold. Yeah. It is cold. <laughs> and then here's the weird thing. So I don't know how y'all's cars work, but mine, it must know it's cold outside because even if I put it like on 70 or what I normally do, it's like hotter the normal and i'm like okay i had the heat on i'm warm now let me pull it back down it'll crack the window or something yeah, but it just doesn't listen so yeah. my car has a mind of its own and wants to do what it wants to do maybe i should take it in to get looked at <laughs> car's it's, fancy. It's an issue. there's an issue with it i don't know cool all right hey guys we got about a minute and we're gonna kick it on the fm talking to wayne kerr about his brand new book it's called braving it's available now you can pick up a copy from kathy you can also get it from Amazon and uh, anywhere else. So there's going to be an audio version as well, and that's going to be released uh, as, as soon as it's done. But it's being done right now. It's in the works. So here we go. Good morning. It's KTA Radio 99.5 FM. Right now it is 1021 on a Monday morning, and I have some guests in studio. My name is Gardy. This is Kickstart. I have author and musician Wayne Kerr, and I also have Kathy, our good friend, hanging out. What's up, guys? What's hey. up? So we, we've been talking a little bit, you know, about the book and the audio version that's going to be coming out soon and everything else that's going on, um, I guess, in, in our world today. So y'all are doing good? 
I'm very thankful. Cold and thankful. Cold and thankful. Yes. What about you, Kathy? I'm I'm cold <laughs> for sure, and and very blessed. So. Yeah. Yep. All right. So you got a copy of the book, Kathy, and you said you were reading it to your to your daughters. Yes, and um, I think that that's why he brought up that part because that is actually the part that um, the first time I read it to him, they were um, we were hanging out, and I was um, gonna you know, do some pedicure kind of stuff for myself. And my kids were like, can we do that with you? And I was like, sure. Nice. And um, so we're all hanging out. Um, and they said, well, can we listen to music? And I said, well, not today. Um, uh, mommy's going to read her book. You can put a headset on and listen, but mommy's reading. And she, they said, well, can we just, can you read it to us? And I was mm-hmm. like, I mean, there's not going to be anything bad in here, but sure. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so... I uh, started reading it to them, and I was just amazed with, like, the questions they were asking, Mm -hmm. the things that it brought up. Um, It was a part that he wrote during um, COVID, so he mentions COVID, so my my daughter, and they were like, we want to send him, like, a video and say, like, thank you for writing this, and this is what we liked about it. Of course, they thought it was the whole book. They didn't at the time understand that it was like one <laughs> sure, chapter sure. Um, or, or one section, but they, um, yeah, so they loved it. And now you need to finish excited. it. Finish it for them. Finish it, the whole, oh, like read, read the, the whole, whole book, book to them. We read Bedtime. parts of it um, on a regular basis, yeah. but yeah, I haven't read them the whole part. Have they heard book. the second half of the Mustangs thing? They have not. Oh. No. Alice, be sure and send me video part two of like. I will. They did it like it was like a movie review. I yeah. Mean, it was like amazing. It was like professional. <laughs> like, our favorite parts are whenever. They're professionals. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the kids are. They're they're literal actresses. Yes, yeah. so they, yeah. they are definitely used to self-taping and being in front of a camera and well, interviewing. they look comfortable. So yeah. They, uh, they actually have an agent, and so they work on... Um, so that was actually in front. You know, we went to our little office that we cool. turned into a videotaping studio yeah. for them. Kathy, That's cool. for you, do you have a favorite part? And then I'm going to ask you as well, uh, Winker. Um, I think that probably the chapter that's like spoken to me the most, I guess, so far has been the um, being comfortable with failure I think Mm -hmm. is I can't remember exactly what the chapter is called but that one really because I think that that's something um currently in my role at ACU um I'm I'm working on some new stuff and um I've always been one that's just been an overachiever and I loved you know doing things and and when I got to that I really I needed to hear that I needed to hear that it I needed to get comfortable (laughs) with failing and um and that it's okay because of what comes from not doing everything that you think you're supposed to do or, you know. Right. Yeah. Because, I mean, here's, here's interesting because one of the, when I, when I started my sabbatical, um, I haven't been a real big reader, like, you know, big giant books, you know, but I was like, okay, I, I, I like turned off social media on my phone and like I, I was disconnected from email from my church and I was like, whoa, man, all this, all that my phone really does is like a camera. I'm like, this is really weird. Like no yeah. one needs me right now. <laughs> but I read the, um, the, uh, a really great biography about Walt Disney and it just blew my mind. It's like, you want to talk about failing over and over and over and getting shut down and opposition and he would get ahead and get shut down. And I was like, you know, you might look at it and think, well, they came out with Mickey and then they came out with Daffy and then they built a park and millions of dollars, you know, boy. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of the people that I talk to, definitely, there's a, a, like an illusion now these days with like social media where like you post only the best and you, you don't you don't share about when you have a downer or, or when you try something and it flunks out totally and doesn't work. But all these people that I talk to, um, you know, we're like, oh, that's part of it, actually. You know, you, yeah. you, you, you're releasing something new. You're creating something new. You're trying a new venture. You're trying something with your kids. You're doing a new business, whatever it might be. And then you learn from when, what doesn't go well. And then you apply and you go again. It doesn't say, well, now I'm done. So I'm going to quit. That's just, it's, that doesn't make sense. You know? Yeah. And we're teaching our kids, you know, hey, you're trying to get better at math. You know, don't like flip out whenever you can't get a problem right. You just, oh, it makes sense why I didn't do it right. You got to learn. Yeah, you know? for sure. And it's okay. Yeah, you know, uh, I was sharing with some people uh, some some weeks ago about 2020, and you know, you were talking about having a word mm-hmm. for for the year. I didn't have one at the beginning, but um, towards the 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 middle and the end, I felt like just being able to 
like evolve or to switch or to be able to go with the flow and just like re-navigate you know that that became what it was for me because if you look at the beginning it was like well I had all these goals so I want to do and none of them happened and I think that was a lot of cases for for most people but you had to kind of be able to to switch you know uh, Kathy is that something you I feel like that's something you do do you have a word for the year what's yeah. yours so mine for 2020 which was funny because it like at the time it meant something different obviously whenever I put my word into play um but later on it became um you know, so um, real that that that's why it was my word. So my word was connect, um, that I wanted to be Mm. a connector for 2020. I wanted Mm. to connect people. I wanted to connect with people. And it's something that I always strive for. And I was like, but I feel like this is what I need my word to be. And um, and so then like halfway through the year when I'm trying to reinvent how I do. Um, so literally my job is to connect the credit union with um, the community. And so whenever I'm doing that and it's not quite possible anymore because mm. we can't have events, we yeah. can't, you know, teach people the same way. So I started doing um, teaching financial literacy to the kids and to their parents through um, t- coaching Financial Peace University and then Um, doing all that through zoom and it was really neat and and working with dave ramsey's team to be able to offer it for free for two weeks so that they could at least get the gist because so many people were losing their jobs so Mm -hmm, i feel like it it really worked out that's good wayne was abide your 2020 word or was that your 2021 word 2021 okay yeah what was yours for 2020 did you have one you know not really you know, yeah. I think I was just in the such in the midst of all of it. And similar to what you're saying about like I, I found this piece of paper that was January of last year that was the kind of the calendar and what the, I was going to see happen and the things that I was applying for and trying to get into. And I looked at it, I found it about four months ago and I was like, not a single thing on this paper <laughs> like actually happened. You know, and I was reminded, God says, you know, go ahead, you know, make your plans like, you know. But God ordains your steps, you know, and it was like, wow, okay, I want to hold that loosely. So now as even planning this year, you know, what's the difference between do we just kind of give up? No, man, you still got to plan and dream and hope for the future. If we lose hope, we're just in trouble as humans, right? Yes. So we're hoping for the future and we're saying, God, you know, man, another amazing thing that John Eldridge said, I didn't put it in the book, but some guys were asking him, um, hey, I keep asking God for some clarity on something to answer a prayer and some direction. And I, I'm just getting no response. And what he said was so brilliant. He said, you know, God could give you a, a blueprint of exactly what to do. And you know why he won't? And I was like, this is the weirdest answer I've ever heard. He said, he won't give you the blueprint because if he gives it to you, he knows that you follow it. And then you check in with him every once in a while. But if he doesn't give you a blueprint, he gives you something better. He gives you a father. And I was like, wow. And so I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of saying, okay, I want the, the plan, the blueprint, right? And God, yeah, yeah, come alongside and we'll do this together. <laughs> Rather than saying, okay, well, forget the blueprint. I'd rather have you. I want to abide in you, you know? And then the fruit of that, I'll just enjoy and, and, and know that know that I don't, I don't have to give up the ship. I don't, I, all is not lost because I'm abiding in you, man, so... But a blueprint would be nice every it's once and again. Sure just like a, would. a sneak peek, and I'll just take a look and be like, okay, yeah. Oh, I know. All right, sweet. Just like three seconds, and I then know. And I'm good. I know. <laughs> I mean, if I could have at least had it for my kids, like how to how to guide them. Yeah, yeah. To Not even for me. With, yeah, like I don't. Yeah. You know? No selfish reasons. Just want to raise just... great humans. Right? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so for the for the book, Braving Wayne, what's your hope for the book? Man, that I, I honestly believe, I hope that whoever reads it or whoever listens to it um, will be encouraged to pause just long enough to say, okay, look, here's some of these different aspects of these people, um, and and I'm just going to trust that that God and his sovereignty will speak to each of them in, in the different way. Like, interestingly, to hear you, Kathy, say, hey, the part about failing and failing's okay, you know, that I'm going to apply that now to my life, you know, and that, that someone else saying, hey, I'll, to have a thankful heart because I've just been f- thinking only about myself. I haven't been thinking about, I need to be more thankful, you know, and just these different elements. If, if, if a person gets it and says, hey, I've been denying what makes my heart come alive, or I've been, you know, turning my back on God, maybe they'll look at some of these stories and go, wow, you know what, you know, I think I need to reevaluate where I'm at. Um, because it isn't everyone I interviewed, it wasn't like a who's who in Christian world. Some of them, it was just about their art. Some was about their music. Some was about their, the way they run their company. 
but there's these common threads in and out where it's like, wow, okay, man, God is all over this stuff. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, so I, I hope that whoever gets it, um, that they'll be, you know, able to say, I want to um, uh, see what makes my heart come alive because the world, we need people who are fully alive, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Is your hope to release another book after this? I know this one just came out, but it's... Not for a long time. Just kidding. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I don't know. You know, I mean, uh, there's several things kind of being talked about, like a braving conference. And it's like, okay, my mind can't absorb all of that, you know, right now. The first thing is to put this out well and and let people hear about it. Uh, Some people are saying, could I do a tale of two Mustangs, like a children's book that's illustrated? And so I'm like, okay, well, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, It would be cool to do a follow-up, even some conversations with some of the people mm-hmm. that you already spoke spoke with yeah. and um, see, hey, do you still feel this way or what's changed sure. since the last time? Sure, That'd be that's a lot right. of fun. Yeah, like one of the things I'm hoping to do is maybe the podcast idea to be able to have what we're doing right now, just real-time conversation to say, hey, we chatted last year. You know, uh, this is what was going on with you. Let's talk about that and tell me how you you're viewing things now and yeah so we'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, have you gotten any feedback from some of the people who were mentioned in the book? Yeah, um, some. It's very funny because you know some are people of note, like they're kind of known in that industry. Yeah, and some are not in the public eye at all, right? And so, so some people have responded and say, "Oh, cool, man, got the book. Thanks a lot." You know, and I'm like, "That's all. I don't know what that's <laughs> good enough. I'm glad it got there safely." Right? <laughs> and then, uh, but then, like Fernando Ortega, who's like you know an award winning songwriter, you know, he wrote me and said, "Man." well done like do you have a background in journalism and I was like no like (laughs) I can't believe that I'm texting Fernando Ortega but no I don't you know what I mean like it's weird so it's all over the all over the map you know okay yeah that's cool right now it is 1034 it's com, 99.5 FM my name's Gardy this is Kickstart talking to Wayne Kerr we also have Kathy in studio the brand new book it just came out in November Um, Kathy this was like the perfect Christmas gift, the perfect Christmas present. Yes. But it can also still be gifted today. <laughs> today. Yeah, Kathy's still passing them out, handing them out as well. And you yes. can get one too. My distribution. <laughs> yes, Texas distribution. For sure. Wayne, if somebody wants to get a book, how can they get their hands on one? Yeah, so there's really two ways. Well, the first way is just to go to Amazon and put in Braving the Book and you scroll down and you'll see you'll see it there. You can put my name, Wayne Kerr. Um, but so uh, through my art site, which is KerrvilleGallery.com, um, there's a little store on there. and Because some people have said, will you sign it and maybe um, specify it to a person or something like that. So I kind of sell them through there as well. But it's the same price as Amazon. So, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, dude. Where are you originally from? So I'm from Houston in the Heights of Houston. Yeah. Um, and my I grew up in the house that my mom grew up in. I mean, it's like we were, she lived there 60 years before they moved away and that she saw that area change a lot. Like she said, say, she yeah. was she was on 14th Street, uh, and she said, I remember there were cows here, and that was outside of downtown, you know what I mean? And that's just obviously changed a whole lot. It's grown like crazy. Um, so, yeah, so lived in Houston my whole life and uh, moved to Katy, uh, and now Fulcher, which is just outside of Katy. So, okay. Yeah. yeah, the Heights is totally different, even from like 10 years ago. And oh, then yeah. It's just like expanding. It's, it's interesting to watch and see because yeah. there's not any zoning in – in Houston inside of the 610 loop. Yeah, it's wild. So what's funny is like if I drive uh, down the street where I grew up, the little house I grew up in is not there anymore because it was like a house on blocks. You know what I mean? Like a little 1945 house. And there's a three-story home there with like a porta cache with a big lantern that you drive in. And so I'm like, Daddy grew up here. Not, <laughs> you can tell the kids, like, not here. They're like, wow. Well, yeah, that, that tree was there, but that's all. Right. That, that was my tree. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, well, yeah, that's right. That's, uh, that's, that's fine. It's a little different. <laughs> oh, man. So, um, you know, is there? it's going to be interesting marketing the book. You know, social media is, is huge to be able to help that, um, you know, whenever – Someone releases a book, usually it's like, hey, we're going to go do a, you know, book signings here and all these different things there. Have you been thinking outside of the box or just just kind of going with, yeah, with the flow? That's what's interesting. So about a year ago when I had finished all the interviews, I was starting to type it all out. And uh, so I started having dates and locations set up around the country to go and share about my book. Right. So places that I've played. And I was yeah. like, this will be an easy thing because I can share my heart and share about the book. And then all of a sudden that goes has gone away. And it's and it's another level of, OK, wow. OK, God, I totally trust you. Like, you know, the things that I was going to try and 
move in that direction, well, I can't, I can't manipulate that. All right. So it's only like put, put the work out and then see, see where it goes from here, you know? Yeah. So as this year opens up and prayerfully, you know, please God, as things start to open up, you know, I might be able to do some things and, um, maybe a conference or two, some of these different places to really unpack some of this stuff. Um, but if not, even if it stops right now, it's like, wow, okay. You know, wow. What a blessing to be able to say, you know, because you know, what's funny is someone might, if you're watching this or listening to this right now, you think, Oh, this guy's done albums before. So it's probably not a big deal to put the book out. I mean, there was like doubt and opposition and what am I doing from the beginning? I mean, when I, when I launched it on Kickstarter and I posted it and said, I'm, I'm going to put this, do this book. I've done all these interviews. And as soon as I clicked the upload to Kickstarter, it was a way, an ocean wave of, of, of opposition. I don't know how to put it, but like doubt and like, what am I doing? Why people don't care, you know, all this stuff. And, um, it was really powerful because it, the last chapter is with John Eldridge and he was sharing, uh, I said, you know, do you ever have those feelings of like questions where you say, gosh, I have no business doing that or, or voices that say you, you can't make it, you can't do this, that, and the other. And it's pretty brilliant what he said. He said, uh, you know, if yes, there, there are voices that come from the enemy in the world that doesn't want beauty in the world. <clears throat> so yeah, there's going to be voices that say you shouldn't do that or you have no business doing that or who are you, whatever. Um, and he said, there are naysayers that say stuff. You got to get past that. But he said the, the part, if you're saying I don't have, what it takes something he said that's the beautiful territory of jesus to ask him into that stuff and say why am i feeling insecure about that you know and so that's all been a learning curve to to just say i mean it was there was levels of me braving to put the thing out you know where it was like what am i doing who cares you know um but when you press through it it's like okay wow it's gonna be okay let's just do this move forward just do it yeah 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 nike that's yeah. like one of That'd their slogans, logo. but it just makes, <laughs> I have an idea, mm -hmm. but it just makes sense. Cause like, yeah. if it doesn't make sense and then like you said, Hey, there's, it's not just me, but there's somebody else that's inside of me and they can do and help me do anything. And then yeah. put your head down and just kind of yeah. keep driving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Like happen. one of the deals in the book too, was talking about how I think a lot of times we think I'm going to pursue this thing because uh, it'll be a blessing or this is how I'm wired and it's going to be a blessing for me. Right. But really the bigger thing is like when you, when you're fully you, then you're going to be a blessing to other people. It's not about you. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yes, you're walking in who you're created to be, but guess what? It's not, it's not all about you, you know, narcissistic world, you know, it's for other people. It's like, this is, could be an encouragement to someone else, or this could be a blessing and what you're doing, reaching out over the airways. We don't know who's going to listen right now. Right. But to know that, wow. Okay. God brought you to this conversation and, and, and cares about your heart. You know, like all that stuff is huge, right? So mm -hmm. what happens if this morning you woke up and said, ah, oh, I'm not going to go do that. I have no business doing that. And who am I to be on, on the radio doing this? You know, oh, you I've gotta, had those thoughts. You got to press through. <laughs> You're Even like, my car, morning, my car morning. is too cold. I can't do this. <laughs> then it got too hot. It's really, yeah, it's a really yeah. weird situation, uh. right? Kathy, um, is there anything else you'd like to share about the book, about Wayne? Any stories? How oh, you how y'all met? Lots of stories, but oh, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I you know, really and truly, like you know, I and I've told people I'm like, give me an honest review of the book because I'm gonna love it no matter what, mm. because there are people in your life that you really and truly feel like God put them in your life for a reason and um. And, you know, it's not like Wayne and I talk every day. Um, and um, But over the years, like, seeing how he has connected me with others, mm -hmm. um, I've introduced him to my youth groups that I've helped work with and um, introduced him to my family and to my friends. And then, you know, seeing how all of that has intertwined over the years, you know, he's just been a great inspiration. I, I like to give him a hard time about his earlier songs, <laughs> one That's in right. particular. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I which, may or which may one? Not, I may or may not have to rap a little bit during the bridge. Okay, I mean, okay. In 1995, that was the thing. <laughs> yeah, I what? mean, DC yeah. Talk, Toby Mac, you got to have a little rap section. You do, yes. It's not happening today, though. <laughs> <laughs> I did get him years later to do it one time yeah. whenever he came to play for my youth group in Corpus. Right. What's the track? Do you remember the name of the song? Oh, yeah. It's called Love, Love, Hey. Love, Love, Hey. Yeah. 
And we're going to have to add that in I rotation. I can't find it. Yeah, it's like, unavailable. It's, <laughs> that's <laughs> what I mean. This is like, this is pre-iTunes, pre- oh, yeah. This is, yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm pray that it remains unavailable. You hold the masters, and it's like these <laughs> under right. lock and key. That's so funny. If Kathy gets her hands on these, KHEA is definitely playing it. We're going to oh, play yeah. it. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, I just I really feel like because our paths have been you know, similar, getting married and then mm-hmm. having kids around the same age, like his music has really grown with me over the years. And mm-hmm. um, But one that I like to tell a story is that um, I worked for the Y for nine years. Um, and when I first started doing uh, budgeting, so I remember budget time for our directors before I was, a, you know, running it. And, I, and I've had my own business and I've done this for a long time. But I remember getting in that seat and thinking, this isn't my money and this isn't even really the wise money. I, you know, I was the membership marketing director and so it was like all the events for the year and stuff and those that's like the community's money. Mm, yeah. Um, you know, I have to decide if somebody gets a scholarship so that their kid can play a sport or so that they can have exercise so that they can live and it just was such a big responsibility to me. Like I was like, I am, you know, this is not me. And so I remember getting, you know, to that point where I was going to start doing the budgets and it's a, you know, pennies in the hat for some of the other wise for our little why it was like two point one million dollar budget. And I'm I'm sitting here and I'm going to turn this in and say, this is what I think we should do mm-hmm. with this. And um, so I closed my door and um, and I, you know, just put my iTunes on and uh, the song Crucify Me mm-hmm. came on. And from that moment on. That is the song that I would listen to the entire budget. I would just put it on repeat. And so it says, um, I may be wrong, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it says, crucify me like clay in the potter's hands. Yeah. Um, and as you form me, realize you have a plan. And so I like always just felt like that was like God's plan. And yeah. um, I was just helping facilitate it. So yeah. that's my story wow. to you. That's sweet. Awesome. Jeez. So. Two point one million dollars is a lot of money. I was going to say. Yeah. What you say? <laughs> well, I mean, you got to think that overall the Y has. Sure. You know, so yeah. if any other Y people were listening, they're like, "That's nothing." <laughs> <laughs> that was one department, so it, you know, but wow. but it, you know, it was a big responsibility to me. Definitely, wow. so definitely. Um, Wayne, is there anything else you'd like to share about the book, music, art, life? Oh my goodness, man! Um, you know, I think people have said, "What is one of your favorite like stories or interviews from that?" And I think one of them was. Um, something that prompted me to make a bracelet, and it says, be present, be thankful. Um, uh, there's one of the guys I got to interview, and his name was Mark Harris, okay? And he's in Dallas, and he's at Gateway Church, but he used to be part of For Him for 20 years, right? Okay, Traveling, yes. doing music. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to talk with him about some of those similarities that we have, like uh, music, but then also working within church and just being a creative person. And uh, he shared this story that was pretty mind-blowing, and he said— that a friend of his um, was on an airplane um, and sat next to a man who was very, very elder, very elderly. And um, as soon as, and he was traveling by himself and said they took off and he wanted to talk to the man and uh, he, the man fell asleep pretty quickly. So the plane is going and then they came and announced and said we're about to be touching down soon. And so they woke the man. He said, he said, if, if you don't mind, can I ask you how old are you? And I think he said he's maybe 95, 97, very old, elderly man. And he said, are you traveling alone? And he said, uh, yes, traveling alone. And he said, there's someone needing me. And he said, well, um, if you don't mind, can I ask you a question? I turned 50 this year. And so this was that piqued my attention. And he said, what would you tell your 50-year-old self at 97? And he said, I can tell you right now. And he pulled out of his pocket like a golf marker that on one side said, be present. And the other side said, be thankful. And he said, when I was 50, all I was about was my business, growing my businesses. And um, everyone just admired me. They knew I had the, they thought I had the answers to the questions. If, but I was, he said, I, I was never really present. If I was at a lunch meeting, I wasn't really at the lunch meeting. I was thinking about the two o'clock phone call, how to answer it. And at the two o'clock phone call, I was thinking about the five o'clock meeting. And at, when I was home for dinner, I wasn't really with my family because I was thinking about the meeting the next morning. He said, I was wildly successful. He said, but right now, Several of my children have passed away, and the other ones are, 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 I'm estranged from them. I don't have any relationship with them. And the plane touched down. And it made me realize, okay, wow, okay, I don't want to 
think to achieve something and miss out on the most important stuff, right? I want to be present and be thankful for where I am I'm at, and I want to be fully present. So I made, like, these bracelets, and I got to speak at my church, and I sh- we gave out, like, 2,000, like, bracelets, you know, to people, and, and I need it as a reminder because, you know, in that hand, I'll pick up my phone and be distracted by stuff when my little girls are right there, mm-hmm. and that's more important, you know. So anyway, but I appreciate the time to chat today, man, seriously. Of course, yeah. yes. I'm, th- I'm thankful that y'all were able to come in today. Yeah. It was supposed to happen in December. Yeah. (laughs) Thank y'all for being flexible with me. No worries. This is KTA Radio, 99.5 FM. It's Kickstart. Make sure you go pick up a copy. You can order it right off of Amazon. The book is called Braving, The Art of Pursuing What Makes You Come Alive by Wayne Kerr. Go get a copy today.